Well, today we are going to replace the seals on the front lock cylinders, the front latch cylinders on a, a Mercedes R129 um, 500 SL convertible. Uh, most of the lock cylinders, the hydraulic cylinders, you probably shouldn't want to rebuild yourself. The front ones are fairly easy. They're really easy. They're kind of hard to screw up. Um, the other ones, if there's anything else leaking, I'm going to have those done by professionals more than likely. I just can't help <laughs> trying this myself. Uh, these are available from MB Seals, from Constantine and MB Seals. These are really, really, um, they look to be really, really well engineered seals. They're not uh, some little O-ring kit like you're going to buy on eBay. It does come with the O-rings and the seals, the cylinder seals. Uh, these are made out of a um, polyurethane that supposedly will not um, leak like the original material will. And uh, so anyway, we're going to get at that and uh, be back in a second. Okay, first thing you want to do, this is for the upper windshield latch cylinders. Um, as I said, these are supposedly the two easiest to, to rebuild and the hardest to screw up. So uh, we're going to give this a shot. Uh, you want to re obviously put your roof down, uh, pop the sun divisors down just out of the way. The, the chrome top post cap, small Phillips screw, pull that out, pop the cap off. Um, do that on both sides. I've already unscrewed these, so it's you're not sitting there watching me unscrew things. Uh, unscrew the latch surround, and it pops up on the one side and slides out. As you can see, there's a little, see the little cl clip that goes under? So it goes in this way and down, and then screws on. So you pull it out that way. And we'll do both sides. And then once the both sides are done, it simply slides backwards. And then we'll pop up. So I'm going to pull off the other side and then pop this up and back in a second. Okay, once you get the cover off, you're going to see the latching cylinder up here on the top of the, the windshield. And be very careful around here because you've got glass and stuff. You might want to cover this up. Uh, I'm leaving it exposed so you can see where I am and what I'm doing. Um, you've got the electrical connector for the top that tells when the top is latched and you've got the two clips that hold the hydraulic lines in uh, one's in one's out i don't know which one's which doesn't really matter at the moment they go two different ways to latch and unlatch um, these little clips simply pull off they slide toward the uh, uh the large and you just stick a screwdriver in here and pop these out sideways uh, you are going to lose a little bit of fluid it's going to leak in here This sucker off real quick. And I have the proper size screwdriver. Hold on. No, I'm going to get a slightly smaller screwdriver. I thought this one was going to. Oh, maybe it will. Okay, see, they just slide out. This line's in the way, so I'm going to have to wait until that this one's out. Get the other one out. Clip. Don't lose them. Your dealership doesn't have them. They won't find them for you. Um, I lost one last week and could not on my driveway and couldn't find a replacement. The dealership says they're not available. So um, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to pop these lines out without this unhooked. Um, anyway, this is simply a T30. And there are three screws. One, two, and three. To unhook the whole latching mechanism. You're probably gonna have to get under here to clean out anyway. I've got a pad that I put. You can take a uh, <laughs> a female sanitary napkin and stick it under here. If you're leaking and you still have to drive for a couple of days to get a new cylinder, uh, put something super absorbent under there. Um, I used an oil spill uh, rag, a specially designed rag for oil spills, and put it under there. Mine wasn't leaking too bad, but enough that it's gonna, you know, drip down the A pillar and drip onto your seat. So. Anyway, you could use a, this didn't drip after I put this thing in there, so you could use a, a tampon would work. Tampon? No. <laughs> a woman's sanitary, sanitary napkin. That would work. A tampon's the one that goes inside. Sorry to be so graphic, but you know what I mean. So anyway, we're going to remove these three screws, and then we're going to pop these two lines out. And I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I removed those three screws, and I'm going to pop this sucker out. Oh, let's move that camera up so you can actually see it. 
pop out the hydraulic line. One, just be very gentle with them. If they snap, you're going to not be happy. Second clip, again, don't lose this sucker. Put it somewhere where you'll find it. And then pop out the back, and you will get a squirt. Here's the um, nasty pad that I've got underneath there. So you can see the soaking up the hydraulic fluid. That's pretty gross, and I had a very minor, minor leak. And this is how much came in there, so remember, this is stuff that's going to squirt ever. I'm going to get another rag. You can't have enough rags for this. Now I'm also, um, this, this may not matter to anyone, but I'm not using a socket when I'm working up here because sockets are heavy. I have nerve damage on my hands, so I fumble things once in a while. Anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there but I don't want to drop a socket on my windshield. So I'm using a rubberized, small handheld uh, uh, multi, uh, what do you call them, Hex uh, <laughs> torque socket. Uh, just one of these little multi ones. If I drop this, it's rubberized. I'm more than likely not gonna hurt anything. That's why I'm using it up here. Um, instead of a socket wrench, I don't want to drop it and make a mess. Uh, I tend to do that, so I'm not gonna take the chance. So now we've got the two lines unhooked. And so we're going to unpop the electrical connector. It just slips out of this little clip here and pops apart. And that just tells the little computer inside that your top is latched or not. So now we're going to undo these two uh, bolts here. They're Allen headed uh, T4, if I'm not mistaken. I'm leaving this nasty pad under there for now that's soaking up all the oil. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this one because this is pretty gross. Like I said, that's an oil absorbent pad used in garages for absorbing oil spills. So there's the whole mechanism. So I'm just going to unbolt these two. And I'll be back in a minute. Uh, T4, if I'm not mistaken, or a 4mm Allen headed socket. Back in a second. Okay, so now we're just finishing removing the two screws that hold the clamping assembly or the catching assembly to the hydraulic cylinder. Now you'll notice there's blue on there, that means they're thread locked from the factory. So we're going to be thread locking these when we put them back in. Uh, if you don't have thread lock, you can use. Uh, nail polish. It does work. So now you're going to take the uh, the cylinder and rotate it up so you can get to it. Now you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. Let's see if this is in the a 10 mil to hold the bottom and a 7 to grab the shaft. Oops. I need a skinnier 7. Back in a second, I gotta seven, gotta get a seven millimeter skinnier. Back in. Okay, so we've got a skinnier seven millimeter wrench. So you gotta put it around the the bottom where you can see the. Uh, oh, it's it's wrench shaped. It's flattened at the bottom. That's the seven mil. This is the top. Don't try an eight. Don't try a nine. Don't try vice grips. Seven mil. You can go buy one for like four bucks at a. Um, at, at a tool to a place uh, and or Home Depot you can get a 7 mil and you need the right size don't try something else or you simply unscrew the cylinder so there we go this is the cylinder Wow, that sucker's sticky. And you see all the fluid that came out. These are very, very light. Don't drop it. Uh, I'll be back in a second. I'll show you how to rebuild this thing. Back in one minute. Okay, the next step is removing the snap ring, which is inside and holds the whole cylinder assembly in. And it simply goes in this little groove along the inside. Push the... the um, the shaft back all the way in so you don't damage the shaft 
and then you just simply take a screwdriver this is like one of those dollar store um, uh, eyeglasses screwdrivers and I rounded off the tip so I wouldn't uh, scratch anything badly and you just simply on the clip pry under the edge like get one of the edges and grab it and then pop it up and off I can't really it's almost impossible to show you doing it <laughs> while I'm doing it here uh, be careful with these this thing flew up like 40 feet in the air on me it landed right at my feet luckily and as you can see it just snaps and pops back in when we're done so now that's off I'm gonna try and pull this thing out by hand now it's in there pretty stiff so I'm just going to thread that back in and pull out and you can see all of the the cylinder the o-ring and everything in there so I can screw this off put this aside now this cap will pop off Remember the, remember the order these things go in. Washer, so here's the inside seal. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But there's cracking and stuff in there. You can see the seal's cracked. So that's the original Mercedes seal that we're getting out of there. Again, with the rounded screwdriver. I'm just gonna pop this sucker out. And, okay, you can see the cracks in the rubber. Um, I don't know if you can on the camera, but when I squeeze it, you can see the, the cracking. And if I, well, look, <laughs> see it falling apart as I'm pinching it? Okay. So we're going to clean out the inside of this cylinder. And I don't know where I put my new seals. I'll be back in a second once I find them. Hold on. Okay, I found my seals. <laughs> so you're going to take the new seal and put it in. There's a little opening. You can see the little um, groove in it. The groove goes down this way. And we're just going to simply pop that in. And that is the new seal in. And I'm going to take another, where did I put it? Eyeglasses screwdriver that I rounded off a bit. A tiny, tiny one. And pop the O-ring the old o-ring out and the new o-ring that's included in the kit I'm going to pop on oh. make sure the white this white nylon seal stays on top of the o-ring where it was originally and just roll this sucker on oh stay in place There we go. Now slide it back onto the shaft. Hmm. Okay, on his website, Constantine says to actually file these down so you don't this sharp edge so it doesn't cut into the seal as you put it back on and that would make sense I'm not going to push into this before I do that so I'm going to file the sharp edges here because they don't have any purpose um, to the sealing of the uh, of the seal but they could damage this seal so I'm going to take a file and file that down we'll be back in one minute okay so I slightly filed down just the edges up here just to round them off I don't know if you can see it just when you pull your finger along, you'll tell if they're like a, a sharp edge or not. If they are, just file them down. Put the washer back on. And then put a bit of hydraulic fluid on the shaft and on the seal. And now we're going to stick the seal over top gently. sliding the seal over and we're done basically
and I coat the whole thing in hydraulic fluid again and slide the finish. Actually, I'm going to clean this out first. Just make sure there's nothing inside this cylinder. And slide the completed new shaft and seal in. Okay, and now you have to push it down and in. Now it's in. And now to get this final, the top seal heel here over. have to use a socket or not I'm gonna I prefer to just to make sure it pushes even back in one second okay so I'm gonna use a, a clean deep nine millimeter socket to push the seal back in past the groove where the C clip goes or the or the spring clip goes clean it out again and simply insert the spring clip Hopefully the sucker doesn't go flying through the air on me. They do have a tendency to do that. So I want to push on this with something not sharp. Come on. There we go. And pop down into your little groove view. There we go. And that is the seal redone. And this, this piston is hard to pull in and out, as it should be. Check to make sure there's no junk on the cylinder. And we are ready to reinstall. So I'm going to put some blue thread locker on this. I know there wasn't any from the beginning, but I'm going to put a tiny dab on anyway. Just the tiniest dab onto it. Oops, come on. Let's take the 10 and the 7 again. And if you remember, you have to remember which way the, the two pipes were facing. One was facing this way, one was facing straight. It wasn't facing the other way. If it was, you can just simply turn it until it's down. So we're going to take these two bolts. I'm going to put some thread locker on them and bolt it back on. And then we're going to bolt the cylinder back in. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the cylinder is now reinstalled back on the latching mechanism. Uh, depending on the year of your car, be very careful of this switch here. That's the the switch that tells the top whether or not it's latched. See the little, I don't know if you can hear the little clicky switch. Anyway, that's the one that tells the top if it's latched or not. And if it's not working properly, it will not know what to do when your top goes up. So your top uh, light will start flashing. So, anyway, um, good time to lube all this stuff up, uh, grease it with a little, um, I don't know what the best grease is on here. I'm assuming uh, like a white lithium might be good. That's what it looks like. It was sprayed on there before. Um, I've greased these up in the past with just um, synthetic grease. But uh, I'm going to spray a little white lithium on all these moving surfaces in here. And uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back in the car and we've wiped up anything that spilled that didn't get caught by that oil absorbing pad or sanitary napkin if that's what you used. I put a little bit of, uh, of blue thread lock on these, uh, the three bolts, third one there, uh, for the actuator or for the, the locking mechanism because there was thread lock on there from the beginning. We're going to carefully slip the hydraulic lines back in. And we're going to put the clips. And 
the clips go, how do I explain it, the, the two wider fingers go into the groove in the, uh, the cylinder. Actually, it might be easier to pop that one in. When that one's off. I'm trying to work around the camera here. <laughs> oh, where is the other one? There it is. Slide that in the hole and pop the clip back around. This one didn't go all the way around. see from the side but went in hold on So those are popped in the electrical line. Oops. Gets reconnected. And then slid back into a little clip. Set it back down in, make sure nothing is interfering with anything else. Okay, and we're going to put the three T30 screws back in. As you can see, they had thread lock on them originally. So I'm going to put those in, and once I get that tightened up, we're going to actuate the hydraulic top and see if we can see any leaks and uh, keep our fingers crossed. Back in one minute. Okay, so now we're looking at the lock actuator mechanism, and you'll hear it spit, and you'll see it spit if it's not working. I'm not going to be able to look through the camera. Hopefully that's on the cylinder. i got to reach down and pull the button. You should see the actuator move a little bit. The hydraulic arm move a little bit. And you don't hear any sputtering or squishing, which is good. And let's look for leaks. And we are dry. Nice. So now we move on to side number two because if you do one side, you do have to do the other side. Um, it'll just uh, the the excess pressure from the new seal will make the old seal go. That's what the uh, uh, common belief is, and I am not going to question it. I can do the other side anyway. Uh, seal kit came with two side seals, so I'll be doing that. And thank you for watching. Uh, when you install, just reverse of taking apart. Thanks. Okay, one final word. Um, I can't believe I forgot this. Get off my hand fly. Uh, the hydraulic fluid uh, is on, in the trunk. There's a little thingy under, underneath your spare tire. Uh, there's a little hydraulic reservoir under there. Uh, get hydraulic fluid from your Mercedes dealership. You may have to top it up. Um, after doing this, if you've been leaking for a bit, you probably do have to top it up. Uh, make sure to use that hydraulic fluid. Don't get a different hydraulic fluid. It's not worth saving two or three bucks. Um, anyway, I'm going to be doing a, a, a video on on replacing and renewing the hydraulic fluid. This is a self-flushing system or self um, a bleeding system. So it will bleed the air out of the system with a few uh, operations up and down. You don't have to bleed anything um, once this is all done. Just make sure to do both sides and uh, that's about it. Thanks. Turn off camera.